And this is just one of those cases where on the head of the uh, electron pushing arrow that you, you don't make a change because you're stealing electrons at the same time as you are donating them. Which head are you talking about? This one. That's right. Now, however, that's totally normal. They don't make a change here because this is in the middle of the arrows. Yes. Remember, we always change at the initial yes. tail and the final head. Okay, cool. Well, this oxygen is at the initial tail, so its charge did change from negative to neutral. And this oxygen was at the final head, and its charge went negative. It's totally standard that there might be some atoms in the middle, and their yeah. charge doesn't change. Just okay. like in the previous case, this hydrogen's charge didn't change because it was in the middle. It is both gaining and losing electrons. Mm -hmm. So this is just another type of leaving group here. Okay. By the way, this is what we could call a sulfate, a sulfate leaving group. And is it usually seen attached to methyls or large? Well, attached to any kind of carbon chain. It doesn't have to be a methyl. Now, even if you've never seen this before, you should be able to recognize that this is a good leaving group. What is it that made this sulfate a good leaving group? The ability to distribute the uh, electric charge or the negative charge throughout the entire molecule through resonance. Through resonance. There's another resonance structure where the negative charge is on this oxygen, and a third resonance structure where the negative charge is on this oxygen, plus there's a lot of its stabilization by induction from all the oxygens. So this is an excellent leaving group. Neutral oxygens are normally not good leaving groups, but this neutral oxygen is a good leaving group because it'll be stabilized by resonance when it leaves. In the past, we've talked about sulfonates. Well, this is not a sulfonate. A sulfonate has only three oxygens. This would be a sulfonate with only three oxygens, and this is a sulfate with four oxygens, but it doesn't really matter whether you know the name or not, whether it's a sulfonate or a sulfate, both of those are good leaving groups because they're well stabilized by resonance. Both sulfates and sulfonates are good leaving groups because when they leave, the negative charge is well stabilized by resonance. So we don't need to use a halogen for an SN2. We could use another good leaving group like a sulfate or a sulfonate. And again, we found a way to make an alkyl aryl ether. And these are the typical reagents. And like I said, this is the solvent, and we don't know what this does. It's just around. We learned something we can do with phenols, which is deprotonate them to make phenoxide. And then we learned something we can do with phenoxide, which is we can do an SN2 and make an alkyl aryl ether. Well, we've already learned what would happen here. What's going to happen here? A deprotonation of the phenol. Right. Now, let's take the phenoxide we got from the first step. Take a guess to how the phenoxide might react with this carbon dioxide. To make it a carbonyl group? Yeah, so, so what, 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 what's going to happen? Um, what, what type of arrows would we draw? We would draw... Good. It's good that you know what the Lewis structure for carbon dioxide looks like. We should draw that linear, maybe. So here's the uh, Lewis structure for carbon dioxide. That's a good step. Let's see if we can draw some reasonable arrows between the phenoxide and the carbon dioxide. That's very good. Why is it reasonable for the oxygen over here to be at the tail of an arrow? Because it's, it has the uh, negative charge. Yeah. And why is it reasonable for this carbon to be at a head? Because it, it has uh, a delta positive from the two electronegative uh, atoms on each side of it. Great. Also, also it also has positive. resonance structures where it has a full positive. So this is certainly electrophilic. And then we have to make room for this 
by moving this pi bond. The only mistake that you made is that you drew in the lone pair on this oxygen, and there really isn't any need to draw in the lone pair on this oxygen, because the oxygen is not acting like a nucleophile. However, however, it turns out that even though this is reasonable, in this reaction, this oxygen will not act like a nucleophile. A different atom in the ring will act like a nucleophile, one that you already kind of predicted earlier. Do you remember, what did you already predict? What's another atom in this ring that might be nucleophilic? The carbon at the O position. Yeah, this O carbon. Uh -huh. You'd already predicted that because you said there's a resonance structure where that has the negative charge. And I said, yeah, that's true, and we just need to memorize which reactions the oxygen acts like the nucleophile and which reactions the carbon acts like the nucleophile. So instead of drawing the arrow like this, actually, it'll be more convenient if I put the bonds like this. So let's draw the benzene bonds like this. Mm -hmm. let's, show the negative, let's show the oxygen pushing its electrons down. And then let's show this pi bond acting like the nucleophile. That really goes along with what we were saying of using the O carbon as the nucleophile. We'll so just have to memorize. Can, in this particular instance, we don't want to then make just a negative on that carbon? You could, although that, if you just put the negative on the carbon, that would be just drawing another resonance structure. If you're just moving electrons around inside a single molecule, that's just resonance. Um, that would be perfectly fine. You could draw the resonance structure where the negative charge is on this carbon, and then you could show that resonance structure attacking the carbon dioxide. Or to save time, you could just show the oxygen kicking the electrons down. The way I have it is the way that was done in the lecture notes, but the way that you were suggesting is fine too. In, in some ways, that's maybe more intuitive, what you were suggesting. In any case, the key idea is that we need to know there's a resonance structure where this O carbon has a negative charge, so it can act nucleophilically. All right, and we'll just memorize that this is what happens here. So now let's try to carefully use the arrows to draw what the product would look like. If we take our time, we should be able to obey those arrows and see what our product would look like. It looks like you already started on that. That's good, although there are a couple of details you left out. Good. You just left out a couple of the pi bonds. So this negative charge is turning into a new pi bond here, and this oxygen is losing its charge. These two pi bonds are completely unaffected. So these two pi bonds don't have any arrows coming to them, so nothing's happening there. And then this carbon here is donating electrons to the carbon dioxide carbon. Mm -hmm. This pi bond is unaffected. And this pi bond is disappearing and turning into a negative charge of this oxygen. I think you worked all that out. I just don't want to forget these electrons here. So now this was the carbon that was our nucleophilic carbon. Now, do we, now, does it protonate itself now? Or? Very good. Absolutely. Where can we pick a proton up from? The water. Yeah, we said we were using a water solvent, so we can show that. That's a good instinct. We've seen many times that if you do the main reaction and then you're left with the charge, you might get rid of the charge by just protonating. Now, um, I have a quick question, though. Aren't uh, benzene rings, do, do they not want to reform their aromaticity? Yeah, let's see here. Am I getting this right? One sec. You might be right that I'm making a mistake. I mean, this is more complicated than I thought. Okay, let's actually back up for a second. All right. All right, you suggested that this would protonate. Yeah. However, that actually turns out not to be as great a suggestion as I thought. Remember, this is basically a carboxylic acid group. Well, carboxylic acid groups have under right. basic conditions. Under basic conditions, we're going to stay like this. Because where would the negative charge rather be on this oxygen or the hydroxide oxygen? It would rather be here and be resonance stabilized. We're not going to want to form an uh, unstabilized hydroxide here. So there's nothing we can do to get rid of this negative charge. Can now, the base take a hydrogen? Can the base take a hydrogen from the uh, carbon that is connected to the uh, carboxylate? Oh, very good. Good. That's kind of what would happen in an ES reaction. Yeah. What we should be trying to do here is reform the aromaticity. So that's good. So uh, let me refresh my memory what happens here, but I think that you're on the right track. Absolutely. So we should remember that in benzene, there was one hydrogen on each of these carbons. So there's still a hydrogen here that we haven't been drawing. But what the benzene really wants to do here is reform its aromaticity. Well, it can do that by taking the electrons here from this hydrogen. Uh, notice that that would kick electrons back up onto this oxygen. 